Welcome to Bangkok, the vibrant heart of Thailand. If this is your first time coming to Thailand and visiting Bangkok and you don't know where to start with your planning, well you are in the right place. Bangkok is packed filled of bustling markets, beautiful temples and mouth-watering street food. So whether you're here for a cultural experience, to do a little bit of shopping or go and see the nightlife or simply you want to soak up the sights, the sounds and the smells of Bangkok, then this is the place to be. Most people flying into Thailand are probably going to land here in Bangkok and decide only to spend around three or four days in the city itself before making your way either south to the islands or north towards the city of Chiang Mai. So we have put together what we believe is the perfect three-day itinerary for your visit to Bangkok along with an additional bonus day trip right at the very end of this video, so make sure to stick around to them. Bangkok is one of those places that you either love it or you hate it, and for us, we absolutely love it. The first time we came, we planned a three-day trip and ended up staying for 15. So do be warned that there is plenty to do and it might suck you in. But anyway, that is enough talking. Let's get straight into our three-day itinerary for a first-time visit to Bangkok. We believe the best way to start your trip here in Bangkok is by having a cultural day. And the best way to get stuck into the Thai culture is going and seeing some of the many, many temples all around Bangkok. Now there are three main temples that you probably want to see while you're here, and that's the Grand Palace, Wat Run and Wat Po. And if you want to go and see all three of these temples in one day, the best way to do that is by getting a tutu -tut tour. And you can get these literally anywhere. There are tutus -tut going to pull up to you left, right and center. The only thing is, I would warn you about, there are a lot of tutu -tut scams that go around. So make sure to ask what price it is, where they are taking you to, and if they tell you that somewhere is closed and they're going to take you somewhere else, know straight away that it is a scam and you should move on to the next tutu. -tut. But the first of the three locations that we're going to tell you about is the Grand Palace. Walking into the Grand Palace is like stepping into a fairy tale land of Thai architecture, culture and history. It's a stunning ground. And whenever you're there, make sure to visit Wat Prakao, which is also known as the Temple of the Emerald Buddha. And up next, we're gonna head over to Wat Pao, which is home to the 46 meter long gold-plated reclining Buddha, which will honestly have you stunned at the sheer size of this statue. And the third temple on our list is Water Run, or also known as the Temple of Dawn. And it sits on the other side of the Chao Para River, which runs straight through Bangkok. And if you do decide you only want to visit one or two of these temples, well then you can do this independently very easy. All three of them are located in a very close proximity, so you can actually walk between them all. But if you are pushed for time and you do want to visit all three of them, the Tutu Tour is definitely your best option. Bangkok is an extremely diverse city and now that we spent the morning getting to know the Thai culture it's time to learn a wee bit about the Chinese culture here in Thailand and for that head over to the Chinatown area. It's one of the biggest Chinatowns in the world and in our opinion one of the best and we've been to quite a few Chinatowns all across Asia. The Chinatown area is very different during the day compared to night time and if you have the chance we would definitely say try and come at both times of day to experience it. However if you are pushed for time we would say come in the evening time because it is so cool. The neon lights come on, the street vendors come out and the atmosphere here is electric. The Chinatown area is a food lover's heaven. From the mouthwater and dim sum to the local Thai food and the Chinese traditional treats on the street, it is honestly incredible. So make sure not to miss all of this amazing street food. Also, you want to definitely explore some of the narrow alleyways because they are filled with loads of wee shops and stalls selling traditional Chinese herbs, spices and unique souvenirs. The Chinatown area feels like a very different place during the day than it does at night time. And if you're lucky enough to have the time, we would definitely recommend trying to visit both during the day and at night. But if you are pushed for time, then save this one for an evening trip. 
So day two of your Bangkok itinerary is gonna be a day spent at one of the many, many markets here in Bangkok. And in our opinion, Chattachok Weekend Market is the best. And yes, it is in the title. You have to come here at the weekend, so either a Friday, a Saturday, or a Sunday. But in our opinion, you should definitely plan your trip around this because you will not wanna miss this. This is one of the largest outdoor markets with over 15,000 stalls spread across 35 acres. And you can literally get anything. You've got vintage clothing, accessories, exotic pets, food, everything else in between. And it is such a cool place to walk around. And when you are looking around and get doing a bit of shopping, don't be afraid to haggle because it's all part of the game and part of the fun. Some places will have like a fixed price, but we think there's always a wee bit of flexibility and always a bit of wiggle room. And when you've spent the day walking around, checking it all out, you're probably gonna be pretty tired because the place is huge. So you're gonna head back to your hotel, probably have a nap, and then head to your next location. So we think it's about time you come and check out Bangkok's Backpacker Hub, which is this road right behind me, which is the Kosan Road. It's known for its party nightlife vibes, but actually during the daytime, it's a really nice place to walk around. There's loads of cafes, restaurants, places you can get street food. There's loads of pop-up shops where you can get clothes. It is very touristy. However, come nighttime, it completely changes. The streets become very loud, very chaotic, and people are literally trying to pull you into the bars and the nightclubs. People are selling you a scorpion on a stick or trying to get you in for a tattoo or a henna. And there's just a lot going on. To be honest, it's not our favorite place in the city. However, if it's your first time here in Bangkok, you kind of have to come to Koh San Road and experience it for yourself. So while we're here, we're gonna grab a beer and enjoy it. So we will see you tomorrow. So let's get into your day three itinerary. You're gonna be up nice and early in the morning to head away on a half day tour, about a 90 minute drive outside of Bangkok City to the Damnook Sadoak Floating Market and also the Mekon Railway Market. Both of these markets are very interesting for their own unique reasons. At the floating market, you'll get into a very small, narrow boat where you'll cruise up and down the waterways, stopping off at lots of different vendors that'll be selling different handcrafts, fruit and veg, snacks and souvenirs. You'll also be approached by a lot of these vendors in their own boats when they're going up and down the river as well. Next, you're gonna head over to the Mekon Railway Market, which is also famously known as the Umbrella Pulldown Market. In our personal opinion, this is our favorite market out of the two. Here, fenders sell their goods literally right on the train tracks, and it's still an active train line. So when the train comes, the market completely transforms and everybody has to pull back their awnings and their stalls in order to let the train pass through. And this one is a tight squeeze. You can stand at the side and watch the train go past all of these stalls and honestly there is literally inches between the stalls and the train passing and the train only passes twice a day so make sure you time this one perfectly but to be honest in our opinion they're still worth making the trip outside of the city to go and see for yourself because they are truly unique in their own special ways And after a pretty busy morning of exploring the markets and moving around, you might wanna have a more chilled midday section. And the Lumfinny Park is the perfect place to come. It's known as the green heart of Bangkok and it is honestly beautiful. The park truly is an urban oasis right in the heart of Bangkok. Stretching over 142 acres, the place is massive and the perfect place to come and lie down and relax and chill out if you're tired from this morning, like Ashleen said, or if you're up for it, go for a jog. There's wee outdoor gyms, there's play parks and plenty of things you can do to keep you active as well. Something we love to do when we come here is do a bit of wildlife watching because the wildlife here is super interesting. There's loads of beautiful tropical birds, there's loads of fish in the water, loads of really interesting insects, and probably your favorite one of all is the monitor lizards. If you've never been to Thailand before, you're definitely gonna wanna come and check them out. And this park in particular is home to so many of them. Don't worry, however, they're not dangerous, they're not harmful, and they won't come and threaten you. They just wanna walk off into the distance really slowly and just keep to themselves and do their own little thing. But our favorite part about this park in particular is the fact that you can get these paddle boats and head out onto the lake for free! Free! Yeah. <laughs>
Faster, Ashley, faster! Faster, faster, paddle faster! Scream if you want to go faster! <laughs> and the perfect way to finish out your Bangkok trip is by going to see one of the many rooftop bars and take in the Bangkok skyline. And in our opinion, the King Power McCannahan building is the best place to go to. The view is incredible. You're up 314 meters high and the building itself is quite unique. It's like a pixelated type of an appearance, but to us, we call it the Lego building because it looks like a few Lego blocks have fallen off. This is actually Bangkok's tallest building. And to get to the very top, you have to ride the cinematic elevator, 74 floors up and the elevator itself is a really cool experience. Once you get to the top to the observation deck, you have incredible views out over the city, like Ashleen said. And if you're brave enough, you can also try out the Skywalk. It's a viewing deck that has a glass floor and you can see right down onto the street beneath you. And to be honest with you, it's a wee bit trippy and not for the faint hearted. However, if you're brave enough, it's a super cool experience. So there you go. That is our three day itinerary to Bangkok. And we really hope that, that has helped somebody out there plan their trip to Bangkok. And if it has, make sure to hit that like button down there. And if you're feeling up to it, hit that subscribe button as well. And if you do have a little bit more time to give to Bangkok, then we have one added bonus for you. And that is Ayutthaya, Thailand's ancient capital. The main place to check out in Ayutthaya is the historical park that is actually a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It is filled full of ancient ruins and is properly picturesque. It is gorgeous. And the best way to get around and explore the area is by renting a bicycle. Pick yourself up one of the free maps of the area, get yourself a bicycle and just go for a beautiful wee cycle and enjoy your day. And a few last words of advice is embrace it. Embrace it all. Bangkok can be crazy and chaotic and a lot, but at the same time, it is amazing and there is so much to do and see. Embrace the food, the culture, the people and have a good time. And I was serious. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button.